A round of applause, shall we? So next up, we have Jeremy Loveday and Amelia Hutchinson, also known as Tulip Shazbot. <laughs> Jeremy Loveday is the heart behind bringing poetry to youth in Victoria. The Tongues of Fire Youth Program facilitates workshops and the Victoria High School Poetry Slam Championships. Amelia Hutchinson is an alumni of the championships, having just recently graduated high school. So welcome to you both. Thanks for taking the time out of your crafting to come and sit with me. I appreciate that. I, I did finish. I have a little bit more work to do. I have more time. I'm just kidding. It's a ninja turtle. It's awesome. We'll have to do a close up later. All right. But so I want to know before we get into detail, what made poetry cool again? Like, was it something that was something you learned in high school and you learned the cremation of Sam McGee and then it just dropped off the face of the planet <laughs> and now it's something else. Like, what's going on in high school that's bringing poetry available to youth? I don't know if it was ever uncool. Um, cool, that's good to know, because yeah. it wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think what's making it cool again is that um, it's just that there is accessible poetry, and there always has been. It's just um, letting people know about it and showing the people that it can be done. And it's, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is express yourself in a truthful manner, and that's cool. Yeah. yeah. How did you find about it? How, how did you find out about it? Like performance <sighs> poetry. I think it started um, when I saw a slam poet named. Um, Laura Peace Kelly, I think I was about 12 years old, and I was at um, kind of a youth con or conference around constructive change, and I'd never heard anything like slam poetry before, and this woman suddenly burst onto the stage and delivered what I felt was both really meaningful words with this unbelievable performance attached to it. And I think there's just something incredibly appealing about taking poetry and the written word to the next level, as well as the, um, the idea of having a really accessible platform to kind of express oneself. I mean, that's what um, attracted me to Tongues of Fire when I was about 15, was all of a sudden there was this really wonderful open community of artists who were willing to share and collaborate with, um, with youth. So tell me more about Tongues of Fire and about slam. Is it a genre? Is it a style? Maybe you could tell us. So Tongues of Fire is both a community organization and an open mic series that happens here. It happens every, uh, every two weeks throughout basically the university school year. And um, it also runs shows such as Victoria Poetry Slam, and, uh, as well as the youth poetry movement. So um, basically, yeah, Tongues of Fire is accessible to anyone who wants to get up on the microphone. You have five minutes to do whatever you want. Most people do uh, poetry or spoken word, um, but you can. You know, we do have people who have come up and do done comedy or even bring their guitar and whatnot. Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah. And so then, and slam. Can you help us understand what that's about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, slam is competitive spoken word, basically. So you can go up. Uh, it's completely ridiculous. It's an amazing time. People bang on the tables. They scream. Uh, they heckle. They cheer. And basically, you go up and you pour your heart out, and someone gives you a score out of ten. <laughs> and uh, but you can also go up and you know, basically, in one night, the audience will laugh and cry, and they will scream. And I think everybody who does performance poetry has that moment when they see it for the first time. You know, like, it can be like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of view is constantly changing. I mean, I. I'll see poetry performed one way, and then someone will come up at Tongues of Fire and just do something totally different that totally shatters your view of, of what slam poetry is. And I think that's, that's the amazing thing, is it's still really there's playful. no, well, it's playful, it's dynamic, and there's just no right way to do it. I think someone um, defined it really well to me. Slam poetry is, is poetry that um, demands to be read aloud. And that's, that's, that's it anyway. Any, um, any style. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so I don't think slam, slam poetry isn't necessarily a genre. Slam yeah. is the competition, and you can do whatever you want as long as you don't have a prop or a costume, mm -hmm. and it's your original work. 
So you could go up and do very a traditional poetry reading if you, if you would like. Yeah. Um, what is it like when you bring this program into high schools? How do you, how did that come about? What, um, well, it's been happening for a number of years in Victoria, and actually the first teacher that brought Tongues of Fire in was Brad Cunningham, and he's also uh, sort of my co-conspirator with the high school poetry slam championships. He's a teacher at Reynolds, okay. and he's been one of the biggest driving forces. So he, it was his idea. He brought people in from Tongues of Fire, and we've been uh, going in ever since. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we should probably hear a little bit of what this sounds like. So Amelia slash Tulip, <laughs> do you want to drop the mic and head on yeah, stage and we'll get a little taste? And then Jeremy will do a piece afterwards. This is really cute. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. Give Amelia a round. This will work. Um, this is the same piece I did for the, the Victoria High School Slam, and it's uh, about my hometown of Squamish, BC. So uh, here's the chief. The chief. It's a mountain that's got this flat faced solitude, and it watches my town. It holds our secrets forever, growing lichens above our endeavors, and treasures our stories like your grandma's jewelry. Truth be told, that mountain must know something about justice. The chief just stood there, useless, sending smoke signals to the guilty kids to run and hide. They sat down, collective and conscious, concealing what they'd done. And across town, some guy is burning his bloody running shoes. So my mother puts my father in the ground, surrounded by his marathon medals, and she settles for the silence, and the cops keep searching. And the cops keep working, and judging by the calendar, that metal is going to rust any day now. No one had the guts to say whose foot did the kicking. Is the heart beat beating in the floorboard, ticking like a time bomb, whose blood is boiling, spoiling everything that doesn't begin with a confession? Your exploded aggression left impressions in the back of my father's head, and it's not just him that's dead. It's fairy tales and shoulder rides and wearing the proud badge of daddy's little girl. So that mountain must know something about justice. Because my father doesn't know his wife grew old without him. I tell him she's wise and revised the explosion he left with saying something more than simply he left with a kick. She's gotten strong, standing sturdy on her soapbox preaching peace, that speech you wrote for her marching down the doorstep of our suburban dream that seemed sewn around the seams where I'd come undone beneath the schemes of innocence. I want to tell Bob she weeded through the condolence cards and put the best in a box in our basement. The best of Squamish's sorrow borrowed from Hallmark and left on a pile on that same doorstep you didn't come home through. That same doorstep where the officer broke the news, packed with half-dead hydrangeas and camera crews looking for their pretty little widow at the end of her fuse. So that mountain must know something about justice. The chief just stood there, useless. Don't wait up, Mr. Mountain, because no one's going to say a word for years and years to come. And you'll stay quiet to the violence, watching me grow up with this twisted compliance all the while, knowing the disgusting alliance between his top and bottom lip. Not to make a sound. Not to make a sound. How's everybody doing in the internet land? <laughs> I think of the children who ask too many questions, tossing around whys and hows, keeping their parents guessing, the snot-nosed wonderers, the wide-eyed worm cutters and those kindergarten chemists stirring up everything in their lunch kits, and the playground physicists who learn with skinned knees about gravity. Don't 
ever stop falling. And every morning, every morning they wake further from God and closer to the forgetful strength of adulthood. But keep laughing, child. Keep asking, child. Let the dandelions of your heart grow wild. And years later, and after a drunken hiatus, I'm back on that wood-chipped path hiding and seeking, overwhelmed and weeping, and I still laugh at inappropriate times, but I'll smile towards my end, a belly laugh on my bed of death, a hearty chuckle with my last breath, they'll call me crazy. Childish? Maybe. But I know it. I'll get the last laugh. And child, I don't got all the answers. In fact, most days, my wonderment won't fit in this box that is my manhood. Thankfully, you color outside the lines, able to see the bigger picture. Life too huge, holy, broken, beautiful to fit on any one page of scripture. Child, I do know that we're all descendants of Pangaea. Undying energy, older than oceans. We used to do the backstroke. In the primordial sea, the lowest common denominator may be our highest state of being, so let's breathe and let go of God. Give her some space, for we are the atlas holding up the heavens, holding the Atlantic, the infinite, unending. Find the red soil of our hearts in the parched hills. With blue-eyed natives we will stand, sweet mint tea steeping in our hands, seeping between henna fingers and the rivers of ourselves undammed. Let waters flow, panaceas doing the butterfly stroke. We're all solar energy, so come dance with me. Child, hold on to your wonderment. And your imaginary worlds, they are as real as anything. And magic is just illusions. Like falling in love is just pheromones. Or Beethoven is just sound. Or these poems are just words. So go play. And keep laughing, child. Keep asking, child. Let the dandelions of your heart grow wild.